What's up, residents? What's We've up? got an interesting video for you guys today. We actually have good friend of the channel, the one and only Joe, the creator mm -hmm. of Goji Center, yep. here to talk to you guys you. with us about the new Monsterverse movie, Godzilla Kong, The New Empire. So we're just going to talk about this thing, man. No, no structure, no, nothing like that. So guys, you know, we haven't really talked about it too much. Uh, you know, like personally, yeah, we've quickly messaged each other, but yeah. it's been what now? Three days after the new Empire has been out officially? Yeah, Fri Friday was know, the official man. one. Some like... people saw it a day before and like, what, the Thursday? I saw it twice already. You saw it twice? Yeah. I just oh, saw it geez. yesterday. I saw it on, like on Thursday, the day before the official release. Ah. Um, yeah. So I think it was really good. I mean, you have to come in with a certain mindset in this film. You have to turn your brain off for a little bit. You have to go in for the fun, yep. for the monster brawls. And everything um if you come in with another mindset you're probably not going to like it it's not the movie for you so you can yeah. uh, fuck off honestly um <laughs> you can bleep that out sorry hey. but like seriously it, it's 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 a really good movie for a kaiju fan um it, it's what i've always wanted to see in the monsterverse and i think it was executed really well the choreography 100 percent uh it was on point Godzilla though, can we talk about Godzilla, please? Let's talk about Godzilla, man. Let's that just dude, go for it. Yeah. this this dude literally was the GTA train of the monsterverse <laughs> in this movie. Nothing stopped him. This thing was crazy. It, it was yeah, he was, cool, he was like Kratos, just it. going I, around I like, eliminating all the gods. That's basically what he was. <laughs> he was one, yeah. He was one shot and everything. Like, I mean, we've always kind of, uh, at least I've always gotten on to Godzilla a little bit in the MonsterVerse for being like, he always has to get beat up before he comes and wins. He does like that classic, like WWE style, like gets his yeah. ass whooped and then all of a sudden starts skipping. Yeah, back he always up. gets He's to like, his ah, lowest now point I'm gonna win. and then they like build him back up. But and this, they he were, comes back. he was like, I've this listened one, to all your complaints and I've decided to make him unstoppable, and then I've made him more he unstoppable was. <laughs> he was op it's it's just it was honestly kind of weird seeing godzilla that strong i i, I want to point out something and i mentioned this to you al all right so godzilla was like insanely op he was one shot in everybody yep. and then he evolved and then he was supposedly 20 times more powerful That's what it said, I, yeah like, bop, popped up on the screen that one time it's like his power is 20 percent more 20 times yep. more and uh then he, he actually seemed like he got weaker after he powered up <laughs> Because, <laughs> like, all of a sudden he couldn't kill anything. He was just kind of well, fighting. I guess the so. point was to show how, like, big and strong Shimo was. But, but like, you know, you don't really, you can't really base it on anything else because you didn't see him, like, destroy another, what would normally be a powerful Titan, like, even easier this time around. Yeah. Like, oh, here's a new Muto. Yeah. Watch how mm. it's just stomps on it this time around. No, he just goes straight to Shimo. Yeah. And they're kind of just like, they're kind of like equals, really, in terms of like their overall yeah. abilities. What'd you guys think about the, uh, you know, we all thought it was going to, well, at least a lot of fans were, you know, coming up with, a, uh, here's the reasoning behind him being pinkish colors because Gamma or all that. Yep. But I think in the yep. movie, you know, spoilers, by the way, he kills Tiamat and then sucks up her pink energy juice. Yeah. So that's pretty much at least what I got out well, of it. We were kind of he... like, we were kind of like right in the way we we're talking about it. Is it about the um, electro, is it electromagnetic spectrum or something to do with radiation <laughs> about how pink yeah. is often what they use to represent? Yeah. Pink is the highest, the highest. I think. It, uh, I think it's gamma yeah, radiation. Yeah, it's, it's usually something um, that's like off the charts. Most radioactive. It's like, it's like pink. Uh -huh. um, so like it kind of like, we were kind of right in the end of the day. Like I, I was like, oh, what if it's like some pink crystal? And I know we were kind of like, ah, oh, with the crystals, enough of the crystals. <laughs> so, like, sure? I was like happy it wasn't just he absorbed some crystal energy. Yeah, it was it was really cool though. Uh, I do want to address this though with the whole thing with Tiamat. Everybody on the internet's like, oh, Godzilla disrespected Tiamat and like he's just an asshole. Well, no, they do have some history. You know, they did fight in Godzilla yeah. Dominion, and Tiamat was one of those unsubordinate titans. Yeah, Tiamat's exactly. always Godzilla been Godzilla got rid of all the bad titans. It, is that canon yeah. anymore, though? You know? <laughs> Does it make it non canon? No, I mean, I. Oh, yeah. T I don't know, not really, but like Tiamat, yeah, like she would deserve it. Like they do have beef if you look at that, that you know, that comic. Um, but in this movie, she's not doing anything wrong. Godzilla just invades yeah. this girl's home and decides to kill her. Like, Godzilla's a murderer in this situation. He's just like, I want more power. I'm going to break into your house, and I'm going to kill you, and then I'm going to suck up your essence. It was like, it was a necessary... <laughs> it's like, damn. It was a necessary kill at, at the end of the day. <laughs> you are worthy of the sacrifice for me to uh, get strong. Yeah, I mean, she could have just took off, right? But no, she wanted to fight. She likes you to know, fight. hats off to Tiamat. She went out with a fight, but, like, it wasn't really much of a fight. It was just an assassination, honestly. They... 
Godzilla just chopped her up, turned her into sushi, pretty much. It's funny because he's and he, he's become it. like the kind of titan that he would have killed back in like King of the Monsters. <laughs> he's become like he's become yeah, Ghidorah. He's, yeah, he's going around aggressive. killing things. Yeah, he's just yeah. kind of killing the kill. So, and I think we're actually going to kind of see. Uh, what, what you guys, you guys have seen it, and I got a video coming out on it of um, Winger talking about how you know the next movie, which we're, we're I think we're all pretty clear that there's going to be a follow up to this, unless the movie just randomly stops making money. But anyway, what do you guys think about you know we're finally going to get potentially more of a story focused about Godzilla in this next one, and I think you know that will allow us to kind of see his full picture come together. I don't know. I'm well, that's obviously to what he go. wants to do, but no, I think I, I, I think am, yeah. Legendary knows that Kong is like maybe the recipe for success because all the ones where Kong is the main character have done better or at least as good as like, you know, the top earning ones in the MonsterVerse. So I wonder if like he wants to do that, but how much are they going to let him make Godzilla be this main main point. focus? But what do, what do you think could what do you think could lead lead into though with the ending though like what what's going to happen to Kong now he's basically King Kong he's got an entire civilization Dude, of Kongs at his disposal uh, and Godzilla's just I don't know sleeping yeah. somewhere what what can they what can they well, do let me say this they they're too powerful now like yeah. Kong is King Kong he has a freaking ape army he has freaking Shimo Godzilla's yeah. just supercharged at this point. Like, yeah. what can possibly stand against him at this point? If it's not, I'm not. I'm not saying that we should add Destroyer now. Now is not no, the time. No, not yet. They're too powerful, though. They need to go up against another army or something like. The I think. I, I mean, right? I, people are saying it's too cheesy, but I, I think it's the only way to do it because they can't go and like. If the synopsis for the next movie is like an even greater Hollow Earth threat the is one emerging, we've been it's like oh my god, ten years for. Nah, we we have to do we have to do aliens. No. We have to. I do don't aliens. want aliens. We have to, man. No. There is no other way. I don't know how else to do it. Like I'm not talking about cheesy lame aliens. I'm talking about some really scary. Like yo, these things are actually strange. Like they could have their own monsters. Well, Maybe it's Ghidorah's family. Yeah, they could probably connect it back to oh they sent Ghidorah, but you know they'd be able to link it back to that. But I mean, I've seen a lot of people be like, oh, it's got to be like going heading towards like a Titan Avengers, right? We're going to have Godzilla and Suko yeah. and Shimo and Kong and his army and Mothra going against I don't know another army of something. Oh, yeah, I forgot about Mothra. That's got to be like that's got to be yeah. what they're heading towards is is, is an Avengers yeah. level threat. That's yeah, that that's that's pretty much what I'm getting at. Like that's the only thing you can really do at this point unless they want to go and just make I mean, a sing singular strong monster but uh, cuz realistically know. outside of the marketing I mean, she might another and, way like scar uh -huh. weren't a huge threat they they weren't this world ending threat they were kind of like a, a mob boss villain with a huge attack dog you know it was it wasn't something that yeah. is is like an end game situation they can do so much more that makes it's scar angry, yeah he was just an angry guy tribal <laughs> village there's so much more they yeah. can do, but I, I don't know what. And I don't want them to just do yeah, a Toho monster because I think they've shown that these original monsters are actually just as good as some of the classic Toho monsters, except they're leaving their own yeah. new legacy. They should do a solo Godzilla movie at this point. Like, just focus on the surface world and then do another Kong movie that's like on the Hollow Earth. And then, you know, I feel like that's what people want. People want another solo Godzilla movie because the last two have been kong oriented like you know with kong yeah, being the fair, best yeah. end of it and and uh i feel like godzilla needs to find another threat up here like sure like I, i'm not opposed to aliens because i mean technically Ghidorah was sort of alluded to be an he alien, an alien in a sense, yeah. yeah so so i wouldn't be opposed to it but they have to execute it well like I don't. I don't want it to be super goofy. Everybody yeah, and that actually brings Godzilla. up a good point. Yeah, I totally get you. I, I read somewhere, and I can't find it, but I read somewhere that like uh, one of the Wingard interviews that the seven million interviews he's had the last month, he said something along the lines of like, "I can't keep doing the, this kind of goofy buddy cop Showa era style movie forever." And he says like, "Maybe in my next movie, I take it more serious." And if and yeah. then. You know, but that that's not the one that got popular. The one that's getting popular is him being like the next one I want to focus on Godzilla's story and his picture coming full circle. Um, so, I, you know, that's just, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean there's going to be some more goofiness. Although, 
after how well this movie's doing with the goofiness, I think that they're going to be like, just make another goofy movie. Uh, not goofy, but like another whatever this movie, this roller coaster fun movie. Because I'm hearing it from everybody. Everybody's favorite part of the movie is where freaking Kong picks up Suko and just he's in like a baseball bat. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my god, I don't know. I was the most. Uh, that was the first time I've geeked watching a movie since probably like the f- the first Deadpool, maybe the second I, one. I like the point where I actually it, was in like the, in the previews yeah, like, that was it, just me and some other like reviewer from I think Empire magazine. It was just me and him in the theater, and that came so, up yeah, when we went. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, that's how my my buddies did it too. We all went together. I seen their legs flail and they made some weird Kong sound and noise like they're just. Ah! You know, like, so crazy, like, what the frick? I mean, we all have this deep-down urge to just take a toddler and use it as a bat to beat up the bad yeah. guys. So, like, I think it just hit that point, you know? How is Suko not I, dead? I, I, I like the funniness of it, to an extent. I would love to have a dark movie, but we just got a dark Godzilla but movie. But still, you know, like, that said, one. like, that is exactly the kind of thing a gorilla would do. It's <laughs> Just start throwing, yeah. uh, like, a baby around. They don't care. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah, no, I mean, it was fantastic, was and he took it like a champ, and it, it's all, yeah. I don't know. It was cool. So, so, is I'm that your favorite film? Good this do you reckon? Is done. that your favorite? Not favorite film. Is that favorite scene of the film? I mean, I'd have to go and watch it multiple times, but I, I don't know if that's my favorite. But that's the scene that sticks out, and in today's society, where everybody's all uptight it's and so pissy memeable. and grumpy, it just was so. And it was just a great moment. Like I said, it's like. All these movies that have come out recently, like we all are remembering them for just being like these dramatic things or like they do something really artsy and fartsy. But I haven't like remembered a really funny, like laugh out loud moment in a movie in so long. Like and that was a true case of it. And I I, I love it. Even like compared to Godzilla versus Kong, I was like grinning throughout this between between that scene with him throwing, throwing Suko around like nunchucks. It was either that or the anti-gravity fight where Godzilla's just like jumping off rocks and good. doing flips and like whacking his tail. That was I was just like grinning like a like a kid again, yeah. which is why film we need more films like this. This is like so good and charming, and you can it tell is. that the filmmakers Dude, actually we talked cared about it. as well. It's, I've seen so many reviews yeah. saying that it's soulless and like meaningless, and it's like who who are you to define what's true. soulless? Like out of any blockbuster yeah. that's coming out the monsterverse is probably the one that's got the most passion put into it we talked about it you guys remember uh after godzilla versus kong came out we were talking about i think it was uh, like on this channel or or our, i can't remember the point is that we were talking about how these hollow earth fights could have been a thing oh yeah for sure right? and yeah. How yeah. it was like a missed opportunity i don't know man it's like i'm not saying that they listened but i'm pretty sure everybody was thinking about the same thing you know, like, oh, dude, Hollow Earth. Yeah, I remember Chris Stockman said, float. "Where's the hollow, where's the anti gravity?" Yeah, flow? yeah, exactly. And then we got it, you know, and it was done really well. It was, you know, I wish it was longer, but I mean, dude, it was freaking awesome, you know. Yeah. And yeah. that was one of my favorite parts of the movie. Should we um, talk about the thing that wasn't actually covered in the promotional material, or, but is the worst kept secret, which is Mothra? Like, what, what, what did you think of Mothra this time around? Like, did you, did you prefer it to King of the Monsters, or? Was it a bit kind of like anticlimactic or, or how did you feel? I mean, the fact that they were going to use another Titan and then they just added Mothra. Um, I don't know. I, I like Mothra's role in yeah. the previous movie better because it just felt more vital, like more important. Because, I mean, without Mothra, Godzilla probably would have gotten wrecked. And, and it's the reason why he turned thermonuclear, right? So the, And then oh, she yeah. sacrificed herself, you know? So... I think, in my opinion, yes, sure, yeah. Mothra was very important, and I was extremely glad to see her in this film. But um, I'm not saying it was bad. I'm just saying the other one was better. That's it. Like, Yeah, I, I think that replacing Phosphora with Mothra is probably the best decision that they could have made in regards to this film. It's just a good fan service thing, you know? Like, it, it, like her part wasn't huge, and... She ultimately just was her only role was to be like Godzilla Kong. Yes. Stop. stop! This isn't yeah. you. <laughs> stop! Stop! And 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 but realistically, you know, she was in there because whether it was stupid or not, it was the first time that we had a returning Toho monster, and that just proves that like we could get more like Toho action and classic monsters. Yeah. But Mothra's going. Uh, and I think it helps. Uh, we we said this before the film yeah. came out. I think it's going to help with the you know the the classic hardcore you know Toho fans 
appreciate this film more and i think it has done i think it's i think it's helped them go oh yeah i connect this sort of film with this film more because it feels a bit more like those classic ones that i recognize um but in a uh, an interview with adam wingard recently he actually spoke about how the the idea was it's always gonna be mothra like but they made phosphor just in case they didn't get the rights they to it get but for some reason toho i guess was kind of messing them about and not giving them the license right away or maybe they were like negotiating how much the, the rights would be for this film. Mothra just um, looked But weird. then they were like, oh, thank God we Probably. can put Mothra in it. And it's all, so much better seeing the big, my big beautiful moth on screen again. What about the human characters? Did you, did you, did you like them? I know I've seen a lot uh, of mixed things about them that they're just kind of there to, to be there. But I actually, I thought they were pretty fun. Like Trapper is already one of my favorite yeah. uh, characters of the franchise. He's such, he's such a joy to watch. But also, Gia being in this is just that extra bit of heart that the fil- this film needed. It, it needed someone like Gia and Trapper to make it more yeah, fun as well. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, Gia's yeah. role, um, I, I, I love Gia. I love her character. I like what she brings into this story. I wish she would have interacted more with Kong in this film. Um, yeah. That was the only thing that I thought was lacking. But I understand, like, it's... In the movie, Kongs were, I mean, the Kong uh, species were just kind of doing their own thing. And then Gia was like her, with her adopted parents or whatever. Like, I get it. You know, with the humans, yeah. though, the only yeah. reason I'm okay with humans in kaiju movies is because they kind of yeah. provide you with context as to what's going on. Because kaijus can't talk to the people watching the movie. And you need some sort of like human there to tell you exactly what's happening so you can get the context. They're the ones that explain the lore to you, right? As with uh, Rebecca Hall's uh, character, um, we got to see, you know, what the freaking uh, cave paintings or whatever they were, were talking about. We needed a human to narrate that, right? Yeah. Because uh, fr- freaking Kong's not going to look at the camera and be like, this is what happened. No, that's not, that's not what they do. <laughs> you know, you need humans to narrate that for you. That's yeah. the only reason I, yeah. I'm okay with them. Yeah. I, I will say, though, the humans needed to shut up a little True. bit just just like stop talking and just let us like they they would say things that were kind of obvious like someone would go wait this must be under the pyramids and this is a battery and it's like i i can see that just just let them do the thing and let us figure it out ourselves like we could have made a better kind of like, explanation they were probably I, I, like kid, kids you, won't know what's going on yeah I, I think that's kind of what it, it was really just made for like the ex you know just tell the people yeah that might but sometimes be. that even was stupid like bernie all of a sudden became an elite <laughs> technology expert and knew exactly what was going on just by like the lady pantomiming to him like what you know like there's a there's a lot of eyebrow oh, yeah, she was just like looking at him and not, nodding her head and he was like whoa oh can we also talk about how gia just magically appeared on the surface like did mothra take her with her through the portal unprotected oh i reckon she she I must have so. put her in a in her mouth maybe or like some silk casing yeah, or yeah, something yeah. i don't know I, she must have just fused with her because she like turned into like an energy being, so maybe they just became one. Yeah, I like know, it was I, a, I noticed it magic. the second time I watched it. I was like, "Hold on, how did magic. Gia travel through the portal without any protection?" Did, like <sighs> Mothra magic, man. Yeah, I, I wish they would have like <laughs> shown something because like it, there's like a million loop uh, plot holes here, you know, and you just kind of have to turn your brain off a little bit. You know what about those plot holes, though? I did not yeah. give a shit about any of them. Like, I know what all yeah. these fancy, fancy little critics think they want to go, ooh, they can sip on their tea all they want. But, like, I don't care about none of that stuff. Because, like, I don't know. Like, I know what a movie's good and when it's classic and iconic and when it hits all the film, like, Oscar-winning bullshit. But, like, I feel like people are being, like, just because it's a big, dumb monster movie, they're being extra hard on it in terms of, like, oh, look at the plot. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, like, it's easy for them to do it. There's plot holes in every freaking movie. It's easy movie. for them to do it, because yeah, obviously nothing makes sense movie. in these giant yeah. monster movies. But, like, I saw someone yeah, saying sense. that, how, well, how did Trapper get from where Kong was to where pr- the Project Powerhouse Beast Glove was so quickly? And it's like, well, he had a heave, for starters. Like, well, why is it in the Hollow Earth? And it's like, I don't know, because that's where the that's where Kong is. Like, why, why would it not be there? I just think there's a sense of like of suspension of disbelief, and I think that kind of follows through with something like some plot holes, like a guy getting from A to B maybe quicker than he would in real life. You know, they're forgivable things. Gia getting from the Hollow Earth to the surface 
with a giant moth fine that's <laughs> she's like a mystical being now i guess you know these are all right things i don't think these are massive plot holes they're just like contrivan- contrivances you know they they simplify the story they get things going a lot faster but i don't think that makes it worse per se you know i think that's what the critics the critics are going oh it's bad because of these and i don't i don't see why that makes it bad it just makes it a faster story you know i went with my dad and like three of my buddies and they're just smiling the whole time you know and you know minus one was a great movie but i went with a few people there and one of them was falling asleep and the other one looked kind of you know like it wasn't always smiling not saying it's a bad movie. I'm just saying, like, there's a place for these and type of movies. people keep comparing so. it to Minus One, which is just such a stupid comparison. It's just because to make. it just came they out. It couldn't be further <laughs> apart in genre, really. Yeah. They, yeah. And, but I think the yeah. perfect summary of that is, you know, Minus One is is like a beautifully cooked, like, bloody steak. You know, you go to it I'll at a five-star restaurant, <laughs> and it's gorgeous. You know, it's, it's delicious. But sometimes a burger, like, a, you want a good five guys burger and they're delicious and sometimes more delicious than the steak it really depends on how you're feeling at the time but i don't think one is better than the other they just both do whatever they need to do perfectly they both fill a niche a void that we all have yeah so i don't know it's just there's no point in trying to make a war out of it i just think it's great that we live in a time to where uh i think we can almost say it's official right now after this movie's done so well is that are monsters the most popular they've ever well, been? Well, they've outlived DC. I think so. They outlived the DC universe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they def- yeah, so the Monsterverse is the only uh, monster, or not Monsterverse, the Monsterverse is the only, what do you call it, multiverse. Cinematic universe. Verse that's cinematic, you know, whatever verse, that's still going kind of strong. If anything, it's picking up speed. It's, it's gaining new momentum, fans, too. You know? uh, Marvel's going down deep. Gaining new fans, you know, like... Maybe not everybody watching this movie is going to turn into a diehard fan. Maybe they're not going to watch our videos. Who the hell cares, right? At the end of the, and I've been thinking about this. I'm like, this is being, it's almost like, you know, when Al and I, when we first made this thing, Al, we always were like, we wanted to make Godzilla cool again. You know, like make Godzilla cool to the general public, the general people, to make normal people not make fun of Godzilla and Kong and the monsters as much yeah. as they do. And I think that we're finally kind of getting there a little bit. Now it almost seems like the people holding us back are the ones that, you know, like used to be on yeah. our side. <laughs> you know, that, now they want to bash it. Uh, but it seems like the general audience is finally like embracing Kaiju. And that's great, I think. I think the, like it's, you know, take, take away all this like YouTube crap and us trying to look at this, you know, the way we have to. And just as a fan... And it's almost like seeing your family member finally, like you know, achieve, yeah. you know, this this thing they've been working yeah. on. Forever. I think, I think it's just realistically, like, it feels we good. are in what I think many would consider the best Godzilla era, purely based on the fact there's more fans than they've ever been. It's more accessible than it's ever been, and we've never had, I think, this many movies in this space of time. I mean, maybe the Showa era, but again, like someone in. England wouldn't have known that they were releasing. Someone in America wouldn't have known they were releasing. You know, but now yeah. we live in a time where we hear about these things, you know, months apart, years apart, and we, we get hyped about it and we all talk to each other and it's it's an active community more than it's ever been. And I just yeah, I just love yeah, 100% that. So, agree. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Legendary, for, for making this a thing. Yeah, thank you, Toho, for finally opening up to it. Thank you guys for watching all these videos and being supporters of Dangerville, of Goji Center, of all the other YouTubers out there that cover this sort of stuff. You know, like, I feel like we've all been kind of helping at the end of the day, whether, you know, these movie companies will ever admit it to us or not. You know, I think we are helping them. I think they do pay attention to all of us fans. So if you want to potentially get your idea heard, and, uh, you know, Adam's over here thinking about everything right now, thinking about how he's going to plot out his next story. And and Joe made a good point how they kind of listened about the gravity fight scene. So if you have anything you want to see with this next MonsterVerse movie, now's the time to to say it. So write it down in the comments. That guy listens, man. We can go make a video about it. He hears everybody. He does. He cares. He, He like... He is... Awesome. Al got to talk to him. We didn't get, or Joe didn't get to talk to him. I didn't get to talk to him. But he's a great guy and he pays attention to everything. He's such a sweet and, uh, yeah. I, Like Adam, he's, he's, he's around man. listening yeah. so to like, people. So make your voice heard. 
He, he's yeah. listening. He's taking it in. Like, we always, like, okay, so, like, Monster vs. Side, everyone, if you watch YouTube and you watch, like, movie entertainment and stuff, then you know, like, how much, like, modern day directors and create or movie people aren't really listening to the fans. They're just doing whatever the hell they want to to tickle their own ego. Well, Mr. Adam is wanting to tickle your ego. He cares about the fans a lot. And, um, you know, that that's it's pretty, you know, pretty clear. So, there's anything you want to say start getting it out there and you know maybe it'll, it'll come to life in the next movie but i think we've talked about it enough everyone we could go on all day talking about this movie i told the guys we were going to talk for 10 minutes and it says 30 minutes <laughs> al you were right yep. as always it's just so fun talking about this sort of stuff guys so if you want us to talk about more things having joe come over here on dangerville and we talk about stuff let us know down in the comments and uh, as always everyone I hope you enjoyed watching us today. Uh, and only seeing my face. You know, give these guys crap yeah. for not getting their faces on this video. You just man. have to envision that we're here. <laughs> just just pretend. Yeah. Envision them, yes. You put like a sock uh, puppet on the screen. Just pretend it's us or something. <laughs>